Assalamu alaikum. Before I begin, I'd like to thank all these women on the panel. Sharing this time with these influential, successful women is an honor in itself. All these panelists can offer different perspectives, national politics, struggle for justice on the front lines, struggle for justice behind the scenes, and many types of social activism. For example, social activism through solidarity, social activism through reflective writing. In my perspective, the start of my social activism journey was through networking, creating alliances, and coalition building. So my start on this journey was very similar to those six brave girls in India fighting for their right to wear hijab. Now we've all seen that powerful image of these girls wearing masks, wearing hijab, and holding signs saying that they have a right to put a piece of fabric on their head. And I too had to fight a similar discrimination issue, the right of my daughter to wear hijab in high school. Let's face it, Islamophobia is rampant. My daughter, a teenager at that time, was going to a high school that's 98% white. And she decided in 10th grade to start wearing hijab. Now this resulted in the expected stares and giggles and the comments under kids' breaths. But to my surprise, it also resulted in a teacher's discriminatory remarks. I reached out to the high school hoping to get an apology, but instead the school tried to ignore it. In fact, my daughter was punished. She was pulled out of class. Her grades electronically disappeared. The ones that didn't disappear magically dropped, significantly dropped. And instead of the school fighting to take a stand against Islamophobia, again, it tried to ignore it. Now, it's so amazing that just a piece of fabric can cause such an uproar. And at that time, my six-year-old daughter, my younger daughter stated, mom, because you don't wear a hijab, people must understand that hijab is a right and freedom of choice. It's the freedom to wear hijab and the freedom not to wear hijab. So what can we do? I've learned three things from my personal experience and I urge you all to do this locally. One, find allies, reach out to people, know your neighbors, your friends, diversity groups in your neighborhood, your local city and town. Find people who share the same view of the world as yourself and start networking. Two, create coalitions. Share not only your experiences, but listen to other people's experiences. Show up and stand up in solidarity, especially with other minority groups, because when you show up for them, they will also show up for you. Join protests, rallies, make phone calls, and write letters to your local politicians. Uh, join the Justice for All email list. There's always call to action. We're always looking for people to make those phone calls to make our political figures aware of the atrocities around the world. Find, and three, find a platform to voice your concerns and issues, uh, a platform to educate, a platform that promotes seeing each other as human beings, and to respect not only diversity in faith, but also the diversity on how to practice your faith. In this case, let's educate the world that there is some sort of movement of fascism in India, and let's stop the Nazification of India. So these six girls are brave, and my prayers are with them. They have brought to light the issue that Islamophobia is worldwide. Let's face it, it's definitely present in India and it's definitely present in the United States. It's every human's right to choose what to wear and it's a fundamental right to choose to express your faith, obviously nonviolently, and it's fundamental right to practice your faith. So let's stand by them, start locally. And if you are listening to this right now, kudos to you, you've already started on the right path, but let's continue find allies, create coalitions, and find a platform, or at least support a platform to educate people about these issues around the world. Thank you.